We continue now at the top of Daf Lamet Chesam and Aleph in Meseches Nedarim. This is Nedarim Daf 38a. The Gemara continues with examples of words from Sukkim that are written but not read. Zos the Hamitzvah, the word Zos in the Pasuk by Hamitzvah. Yidroch the Hadorech, the word Yidroch by Hadorech. Chamesh the Pas Negev, the word Chamesh by Pas Negev. And Im the Chigoel, the word Im by Chigoel. There are various opinions exactly what words of what Pesukim these are referring to. In any case, Halein Kosvan Velokirion, these are all examples of words which are written but are not read. And the Gemara continues, Amar Avacha Bar Adar, Avacha Bar Adar says, Bima'arova, Poskin Lahadim Psuka, Litulasa Psukin in the West, they would divide the following Pasuk, which we have as one Pasuk, they divide it into three Psukim, and the Pasuk is, Vayomer Hashem El Moshe, Hine, Anochi, Boi Lecha, Be'av Ha'onan, etc. That Pasuk, they divide it into three separate Psukim. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Chama, Rabbi Chanina, Rabbi Chama, Rabbi Chanina says, Loheshir Moshe, Elam Ipsul son Shaluchos, Moshe became rich, from the leftover when he carved out the luchos. Shenemar, as the Pasuk says, so it says you have to carve out two luchos like the originals, and we darshan from that Pasuk, that the leftover after you carve it out, that, that belongs to you, and that's how Moshe became rich. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chanina, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chanina says, Lo nitna Torah ela Moshe ulazaro. The Torah was really only given to Moshe and his children. Shanema, like the Pasuk says, Ksov, Ksov lecha, Psalacha. It says Ksov lecha, and it says Psalacha. Ma Psalasan shalcha. Just like by Psalacha, it means to say that the leftover belongs to you. Af Kesavan shalcha. So to what is written really belongs to you. The Torah is really being given to you. However, the Gemara continues, Moshe nohag batovas ayin, Moshe was generous with the Torah, v'not v'nosna li Yisrael, and he gave it to Klal Yisrael, v'yolav akos of Omer, it's about him that the Pesach says, tovayin hu yivorach v'gomer, somebody who is generous, he should be blessed. And the Gemara continues, Mesav Rav Chista, Rav Chista asks, v'osi tziva Hashem, ba'esa hila lamed eschem, it says that I was commanded to teach you, so he's not being generous, he had to do it. So the Gemara answers, V'osi tziva, the way you read the Pasuk according to the above approach is, I was commanded, V'ani lachem, and I on my own, I gave it over to you. To you. Similar question, the Pasuk says, Re'eli mariti eschem chukim u'mishpotim kasher tzivani Hashem elokai. Again, it says, I taught you like I was commanded to do. It doesn't sound like it was because of Moshe Rabbeinu's generosity. And the Gemara says, Osi tziva v'ani lachem. Again, a similar answer, I was commanded, but I gave it to you out of generosity. And the Gemara continues along the same lines. It says, you should write for yourself this shira. It sounds like he has to give it over to Klal Yisrael. And the Gemara answers, Hashira lechuda. Now that's a reference only to the shira, meaning only to Parshas Hazinu. It's not a reference to the entire Torah. But the Gemara continues, It says that the reason why we're writing this shira is that it should be like a witness for Klal Yisrael. And that indicates that the shira we are talking about is the entire Torah, that there's a command over here to teach it to Klal Yisrael. And so the Gemara answers, Ela pilpula bialma. And the Mefarish over here explains, Pilpula bialma lohavin dover mitoch dover hu denitan lamosha. The idea that you can understand one thing from another, derive one thing from another, that was given exclusively to Moshe. V'niyag ba tovasayin v'nosn l'Yisrael. And with that, Moshe Rabbeinu was generous and he gave it to Klal Yisrael. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Ena Kodesh Baruch Hu Masher Shechinaso Ela Al Gibor V'yashir V'chacham V'yonav HaKodesh Baruch Hu only rests his Shechina on someone who is mighty and wealthy and wise and humble. V'kulan mi Moshe, we learn all of these out from Moshe. Gibor Dechsev, we know Moshe was a Gibor, he was mighty, like the Pasuk says, V'yifros Asa Oel Ala Mishkan, it says he spread the Oel, the tent, on the Mishkan. V'yomar Mar, and the Master said, Moshe Rabbeinu Parsa, it was Moshe Rabbeinu who spread it himself. Uchsev, and it says, Eser Amos Orech HaKadosh, that each, each one was ten Amos, each beam was ten Amos long. It would have been impossible to, for Moshe Rabbeinu to do that unless he was a Gibor. But the Gemara says, But maybe he was tall, but maybe he wasn't so mighty. And so he was, he was able to put the Mishkan up. It was very tall, but he didn't have to be so mighty to do it. And so the Gemara answers, Rather, we learn out that he was mighty from the following Pasuk. Like the Pasuk says, I took the two Luchos, I threw them and I broke them. That shows that Moshe Rabbeinu was mighty. Tanya, we learned in Abraisa, Halukhos Archan Shisha, Varachvan Shisha, the Luchos, they were a length of six Tvachim and a width of six Tvachim, Vyavyon Shlosha, and they were a thickness of three, and therefore again it would have taken somebody who was mighty to be able to smash the Luchos. 
And the Gemara continues, Asher, how do we know that Moshe Rabbeinu was wealthy? Psala lecha, again from the same Pasuk that we quoted above, Psala lecha, Psala son, Shalcha Yehei, that, that you should keep the leftovers from the Luchos, so that made Moshe Rabbeinu wealthy. Chacham, how do we know he was wise? Rav Shmuel, the army Tarvayu, Rav and Shmuel, they both say, Chamishim Shari Binon Nivru Ba'olam, there are 50 gates of wisdom that were created in the world. The Kulam Nitnu Lamosha, all of them were given to Moshe. Chaser Achas, with the exception of one, he got 49 of them. Shanamra, like the Pasuk says, Vatachsereum Ma'atme Elokim, he was just a little less than God, meaning to say again, he got not 50, but he got 49 of the Shari Bina. And the Gemara continues, Anav, how do we know that Moshe Rabbeinu was an Anav, Dechsev, like it's written in the Pasuk, Vaish Moshe, Anav Miod, it says Moshe Rabbeinu was very humble. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Kol HaNeviyim Ashirim Hayu, all of the Neviyim, they were wealthy, Minolan, how do we know this? Mi Moshe, Umi Shmuel, Me Amos, Umi Yon, and we know this from Moshe and Shmuel and Amos and Yona. Moshe, Dechsev, Moshe, like it says in the Pasuk, Lo Chamor Echor Mehem Nasasi, it says that I didn't take, I didn't use one of your donkeys. Now what are we talking about over here? I below Agra, if, if he was saying that he didn't use it without paying, La Fuke Man the Shokel below Agra, he's saying he, didn't, he wasn't a robber like somebody else who might have stolen, Moshe Rabbeinu would not have said, I didn't take one of your donkeys without paying, because of course Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't going to steal. Ela da Afila Ba'agra, rather what he meant was, even paying, I didn't have to use one of your donkeys because I had everything myself. But the Gemara says, But what kind of proof is that? Maybe it's because Moshe Rabbeinu was poor. He didn't have anything to load up on a donkey. He didn't have many items. So it's no proof. The fact that he didn't use, uh, use other people's donkeys doesn't prove that he was wealthy. Ella, the Gemara says, rather, min psalacha, the proof is from the Pasuk like we quoted above, psalacha, psalason yehe shalcha, that the leftovers again from the luchos belong to you, that made Moshe Rabbeinu wealthy. And the Gemara continues, Shmuel, where do we see that Shmuel was wealthy? Dechsev, like the Pasuk says, hinini anuvi neged Hashem and neged mishicho, es shor mi lakachti v'chamor mi lakachti, a similar Pasuk, did I ever take a shore? did I ever take a chamor? And the Gemara again says, i bechinam, if he's saying that I never took it for free without paying, lafuke man de shakal bechinam, he's excluding somebody who did take it for free, is he saying again that I wasn't a robber, I should be given praise that I didn't steal these things? Ela da'afilu b'scha, rather what he means is I didn't even take it with paying. And again, the Gemara says, Dil Madani Havi. Maybe he didn't take it because he was poor. He didn't have much property that needed to be loaded. And so the Gemara instead says, Ela Mehacha. Rather, the proof is from here, from the following Pasuk. Uchuvaso Harama Kishambeso. It says that he returned to Rama where his house was. Viyama Rav and Rava said he darshan from this Pasuk. Kol Mokom Shaholach Beso Imo. Everywhere where Shmuel went, his house, his property was with him. He had property all over. And therefore, that shows that he was wealthy. And some explain that the idea is that Shmuel was so wealthy that he could hire servants and animals to take all of his property with him everywhere that he went. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rava, Rava says, Godol ma shenemar b'shmuel yoser, mi shenemar b'moshe. It is greater what is said about Shmuel than that which is said about Moshe. De'ilu b'moshe rabbeinu k'sev, whereas by Moshe rabbeinu it is written, lo'cham or mehem nasasi, de'afilu b'schar. He didn't even take one donkey. I didn't even take one donkey even by paying for it. De'ilu gabe Shmuel afilu b'rasim, whereas by Shmuel it's saying that even with the consen- consent of the owner, lo'sachro, he did not rent it out. De'chsev, like the Pasuk says, v'yomer lo ashaktanu, v'lo ratzosanu v'gomer. And they said regarding Shmuel, you have not defrauded us and you have not oppressed us. And we're learning from this idea of of this word Ratzosanu, that even Baratzon, he didn't take anything. And the Gemara continues, Amos, Tichsev, Amos, like it's written, Vayan, Amos, Vayomer, Amatsio, that Amos answered, he said to Amatsio, Lo Novi Anochi, Lo Ben Novi Anochi, I'm not a Novi, I'm not the son of a Novi, Ki Boker Anochi, Uboles Shikmim, I herd cattle and I take care of sycamores. And we understand this Pasuk like Rav Yosef translated it. I'm the owner of cattle and I take care of the sycamores in the lowland, meaning I own those sycamores. The point is he wasn't just a worker, but Amos was saying that he owned all of this property. He was wealthy. And the Gemara continues, Yona dechsev Yona, as it is written in the Pasuk, Vaitin schar of Ayerd, but he paid the money in order to go into the ship. V'yamar Rabbi Yochanan, and Rabbi Yochanan said, Shenosan schar shal svina kula, he actually paid the entire cost of occupying the ship. In other words, he didn't wait for other passengers to come and for the ship to, to fill up. He paid the entire cost. Amar Rabbi Romanos, Rabbi Romanos says, schar shal svina have a dalit alafim dinare dahava. The cost of that ship was 4,000 golden dinarim, and again, that shows that Yonah was wealthy. 
And the Gemara continues, V'yomer Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yochanan said, B'tchilah ha'ya Moshe lama Torah m'shachcha. Originally, Moshe Rabbeinu learned the Torah and he forgot it. Achenitl nalo b'matana, until it was given to him as a gift. Shenamar, like the Pasuk says, V'yitin el Moshe, kechalosu l'dabrito, he gave it to Moshe Rabbeinu, indicating that it was given to Moshe Rabbeinu as a gift. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah of Zones Ishto of Let's say somebody is prohibited from giving benefit to another person, he is still allowed to support, give Mizonos to that person's wife and his children. And even though that individual is Chayev to support his own wife and his children, so really it seems he is deriving benefit. You might think it's a problem by a Mudr Hanah. The Mishnah says it is not a problem. But the Mishnah says he cannot give food to the person's animal, whether the animal is not kosher or whether it is kosher. Rabbi Eliezer, Omer Rabbi Eliezer says, Zonas he is allowed to give food to the person's animal if the animal is not a kosher animal. However, ve'eno zonas he's not allowed to give mizonos to the person's kosher animals. That's considered deriving benefit. And the, and the Mishnah continues, Omru lo, they said to him, to Rabbi Eliezer, ma bin tamei what's the difference if the person feeds the person's animals that are not kosher or the animals that are kosher, what's the difference? Amar lehu, so Rabbi Eliezer said back to them, sh'atahora nafsha when it comes to the kosher animal, so its soul belongs to heaven. However, the body belongs to him. In other words, he can eat that animal, and therefore if you feed that animal, you're actually benefiting him because you're sustaining his animal, which he's able to benefit from. With Tameya, however, when it comes to the non-kosher animal, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video, and Daflamid Ches Amid Beis.